Great. Welcome to everyone who is joining in. Uh, great to see you all here on a Thursday evening uh, at seven o'clock. And I hope you're excited, uh, you know, before we begin and start this session again. Uh, we're going to just basically wait for a couple of minutes, uh, you know, because there'll be more uh, learners who are joining in as well. So we'll just wait for them to join in. So if I am audible, can you just say hi or hey on the chat window so I know that, you know, that you can hear me. You can just, uh, on your phones or on your laptops, you'll just get a small chat, just reply to all panelists and attendees, and you can just say hi or hey. Uh, brilliant. I can see the first attendee, Janardhan, who has said hi, Motilal, Mega. Great to see you guys uh, saying hi. I can see most of you are replying to all panelists only. So the point I'm saying to reply to all panelists and attendees is so everybody can see each other and the various, uh, you know, all the different questions that are coming in about all that. So, uh, you know, before we begin, what is this session about? Uh, many of you have, would have received an email or SMS about, you know, what the session is about. So in today's session, uh, we have a very action-packed, exciting session where many of you are obviously those who are looking into, you know, uh, upskilling in your careers, maybe wondering, is an MBA really relevant? Looking at the NMIMS MBA uh, from a grad, and uh, we thought it'd be good to get you face-to-face -face with some of the uh, current and uh, you know, previous learners who have pursued this particular program. So we have our alumni and uh, existing learners as well of the MBA and MIMS program with Upgrad. And uh, so we're really excited. I'll be asking them to introduce themselves very shortly uh, so that, uh, you know, you as well understand uh, their profiles. And also joining us is Navda Khera, who is the program head for our MBA programs at Upgrad. And she also will, uh, you know, be going through uh, the entire overview of the MBA program. So we want to make this session as engaging as possible. So the entire flow is going to be where Navda will just uh, start off, uh, you know, just un unpacking the MBA program with uh, Upgrad and NMIMS. Thereafter, we're going to keep it completely Q&A based, uh, you know, specifically trying to pick up questions that you have, uh, you know, about the program, which we'll, uh, I'm hoping that you will put those in the Q&A tab and in the chat uh, so if you're putting any questions in the chat, please add them in the Q&A because I'll definitely pick those up and ask them uh, during the length of the session. So before we begin, we're just going to get a quick launch, a poll. This is just for me and for the panel to understand, uh, you know, what is it that you're looking at from, from today's session? So the first question is self-explanatory, your years of experience that you have. And your second, uh, you know, question is, uh, is multiple choice. So please feel uh, free to pick up as many as you'd like. But... What is it that you're looking forward to hearing from the session today? Do you want to listen to the alumni experience, you know, understand the features of the program? What are the career prospects after you pursue an MBA? Or do you want to know more about Abra's learning experience? Uh, you know, what are the areas that, you know, you're sort of more interested in in today's session? And accordingly, we will make sure that the Q&A is revolving around, uh, you know, those aspects. So it's great, I think, to see the poll results coming in. I can see a lot of people voting, already 60% of people who have voted. So we'll just keep that on, uh, you know, maybe for a, uh, probably a 30 to 40 seconds more, uh, request you to vote, and then we'll hand over to Navda uh, thereafter going into the Q&A. Navda, you can see the poll results as well, right? Yeah, yeah, I can. Brilliant. So I think we've got 80% of people who have voted, so I'm going to probably quickly, uh, you know, end the poll. We're going to share the results so you as well understand and can see all those who have you know joined in today a good mix of those who are starting other careers those also who are experienced and the various uh, main outcome is you want to understand how do we what are the prospects post pursuing an mba and i think we'll definitely make sure we try to you know give you as much information on that as well uh during this but without further ado let's get right into the session and i'm going to uh, you know hand over to navda who's going to uh, introduce us to uh, you know what is really this mba why NMIMS MBA and yeah, over to you, Navda. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Stefan. So hi and good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining in. Um, a quick introduction about myself. So I'm Navda. I'm the program head at Upgrad, and I look into all the MBA programs. Uh, MBA with uh, Narsi Monji was the first MBA that Upgrad launched back in uh, September 2019. Um, so just coming from a background of launching multiple MBA programs, I think a key problem that we were solving out in the market when we uh, went ahead with, uh, you know, an online MBA program is that if you are a working professional right now in India, there are very limited good quality MBA options that you can get. Either you go to some distance learning program, if you don't have to give up your job, 
um and and do some part time program or you are spending an exorbitantly high value amount on some online program from either indian or international university uh, what was missing was you know a high quality content at an affordable price which is where we partnered with one of the top universities uh, in india one of the top 10 b schools uh, narsi monji global access and brought out this executive mba with specialization in business analytics now when we were thinking about the specialization right i think uh, uh, upgrad has always been a firm believer of making careers of tomorrow so at the heart of being a manager uh, we always thought that you know being a data driven data driven manager is the center of everything and going forward uh, as you know data is the new oil right so the ability to process numbers handle data and make decisions based on that data will be extremely important for all future managers so we wanted to make the make the career of managers future proof and that is why we launched this particular unique specialization into business analytics just in terms of the course outline how we uh, how we designed this course i think uh, narsi munji with its wonderful faculty brings a lot, lot of rigor and uh, you know a lot of expertise into the uh, into the curriculum and i'll not go into the deeper details of the curriculum we have our learners to share that experience with them but what we try to do is to keep a blend good blend of you know uh, theoretical knowledge and also practical application from the industry experts that combined with you know either the howard simulations or the projects and the capstone project at the end it basically gives you a 360 degree experience of not just going to the theoretical parts of all management but also applying them to the real life uh, concepts right so i think when i talk about the uh, uh, mba executive from uh, narsi munji i think it's built on three pillars one is management the second is analytics and the third is decision making so these three put together is you know what what basically summarizes this particular program and i'll not take much of time because i know you want to hear more from the learners about their experience um, and how this program um, you know helped them and um, you know their journey so far so i'll hand over the floor back to stefan and happy to answer any uh, queries uh, related to the program and upgrade in general so thank you brilliant uh, thanks so much navda for that i hope that that gives you uh, you know some sort of idea as to you know why nmi msmba program with upgrade we were going to get into you know i think many of you have already asked about you know understanding the experience of our alumni and our existing learners so firstly i'm going to just uh, ask aftab aftab is our uh, alumni of our nmi ms mba program so aftab why uh, can you just start off by maybe you know shedding light on you know your current role and where you're working right now and then we'll move on to anirudh as well uh, yes sure uh, i believe i'm audible to you yes yes so uh, giving brief introduction about myself uh, um i am a computer science engineering graduate with around 6 years of experience more than 6 years of experience as of now predominantly into uh, software development as well as a bit of uh, functional so you can call it a tech techno functional role i have been pursuing for the last 6 years i i worked at uh, oracle in mumbai for the first 5 years and i moved to um, indore and i work as a production support lead uh, in in fis global in indore so i pursued i started this program uh, back in september 2019 uh, with the very first batch of the program and the uh, overall experience was uh, great uh, nothing short of that i just i just received uh, my degree certificate yesterday only that that's just a coincidence so okay. overall experience was uh, pretty great uh, starting from all the managerial courses right through the analytics subjects and ending the program with the capstone simulation the experience was uh, was awesome brilliant thanks so much aftab and i want to move on to anirudh anirudh is actually a learner who is currently pursuing the nmims program so anirudh can you just sort of shed light currently on your role uh, where you're working at right now and uh, you know the work you're doing uh, good evening guys hi this is anirudh i hope i i am audible loud and clear Uh, yes you are so welcome to this webinar and i'm glad to see so many people who want to understand this program and want to know how this works so uh, uh i am currently in my fourth semester of the not of this particular course and if we look at my my professional background so i'm currently working in a digital marketing space where i am uh, acted acting as an analytics manager in that firm uh 
my total work experience has been close to seven to eight years. I am an engineer in electronics and communication. Uh, fortunately, unfortunately, whatever I started in engineering, I have never worked on that particular from the very beginning, I have moved into the banking domain with American Express for almost three, three and a half years. From there, I have had again switched the domain to uh, the finance sector where I was working with the Central Board of Excise and Customs project. And now currently I'm working with the digital space. All in all, in my uh, experience, I have uh, worked in the, the data analytics field. And also uh, initially in my career where I just came out of my college. I was into a very uh, normal data data analysis where I, we, we used to look only at the Excel. But once, like Navada, Navda said that, you know, data is the new oil right now. The more you look at it, the more intriguing it became for me. And that is the point of time I wanted to get into this field. I started learning on my own. I got into SAS. I did my SAS certification. And Post that, it's almost been five years that I have been in the field of uh, data analytics. Brilliant. I think uh, that's very helpful to understand. I hope that that gives some sort of clarity for, you know, the learners, their backgrounds. And I'm sure many of you also might have similar backgrounds or coming from, you know, various uh, different uh, places. So just to start off with, right, Anirudh mean, and Aftam, I can already see a lot of questions coming in in the chat. A lot of them asking, what is your experience? What did you learn? Uh, you know, and I'd request you to please put those questions in the Q&A because we'll definitely pick those up. But to start off with, uh, maybe you can go with you, Aftab, and then over to you, Anirudh. You know, what was your motivation to pick up an MBA? Obviously, now you are, you're working in your current organization and, you know, you are uh, X amount of years experience. What, what, what led you to think, you know, I need to, need to do an MBA? What was uh, that motivation in your mind? Well, um, having a post-graduation degree is uh, always an added qualification to your uh, resume and your profile, right? So if you want to progress in your career, if you want to have a career transition uh, from your existing role to a different role, you should always keep adding skills to your profile. So that was the motivation um, behind which I opted for an MBA program and I did a research of a couple of other programs as well and I ended up pursuing uh, the program from NMIMS and upgrad just because the curriculum was pretty uh, exhaustive and uh, good enough to provide me uh, good skills as far as my profile is concerned. It was uh, pretty related to what I was doing because software development and everything involved a lot of technical stuff and the grad MBA which we are uh, doing um, it also had a pretty technical related stuff so the curriculum was pretty attractive to me also the course fees was uh, affordable when compared to many of the other programs so those couple of things were the actual motivation for me to pursue this program brilliant thanks so much uh, Aftar. and maybe you can sort of shed some light on that anirudh uh, from your point of view, is it was it similar to what Aftab said, or was it some other different motivation for you? So, uh, quite similar to what Aftab said, you know, in terms of the career growth and everything. But what I want to add is that you know, after what I realized in the, the way the current situation is in terms of past seven to ten years, where earlier when we only used to see either it's engineering or it's a non-engineering background that you have, and there were not many options in terms of progressing. Uh, analytics is again a very new field that has entered in India, uh, where a lot of a lot of colleges as of now is also opting to teach this as a main course in their curriculum, right? My objective of doing this particular course was again, to add a value into the CV, where now after, after a certain work experience, after a certain uh, growth within an organization, if you want to get into the business side of the perspective of the of, of an organization you will always require an mba irrespective of how much experience you have gained irrespective from wherever you have come from be it a tier a college or a tier b or tier c college mba is something that gives you more a, a, you know a more you can look at a, a at a larger picture in terms of what exactly you want to achieve instead of just looking at what's the step by step knowledge of what you achieve only through uh, a simple graduate degree so that was one of the major reasons. And second was that, you know, obviously when you do an MBA, you get a lot of opportunities in terms of monetary as well as in learning. 
that mm. is the second that is the second major reason i wanted to pursue an mba for brilliant and you know you have you've got 7 years of experience and uh, you know uh, do you like in your mind like you could have done this earlier as well is there any specific reason you said okay now 7 years in i'll do it do you wish you had done it earlier in some ways or are you uh, happy to be honest uh, when i when i got into the field of analytics right uh, i i got into the field of analytics in close to 2015 2016 where uh, again you, you can either drop off and complete your mba or you can do a certification program or a diploma program which was which was i was never interested in because in the end that will be just a certificate that will not be added as a post graduate degree into my uh, resume and because mm-hmm. i also realized that someone who has had a four to five years of a work experience it becomes difficult to uh, drop off from their uh, working curriculum and join a college for two years three years until unless it's a it's a tier one college like iims or triple or iits or, or or a gmat or something like that right uh, mm. that is the reason i was not able to uh, pursue an mba on an earlier stage uh, like uh, navda mentioned and aftar mentioned that you know this this course came in 2019 right and at that point of time uh, nmims was the only course that was offering an mba degree not a certification or not a diploma cert, uh, pgdm right so that is one of the reason that having an mba beat executive but a proper mba degree would certainly help me give a edge over the about uh, rest of the courses that is available online mm. brilliant and you know aftab i want to uh, you know uh, ask this to you again anirudh because aftab sort of touched upon this also as to why he picked up uh, the program uh, like you know so what was the motivation to join upgrad you know there are so many different opportunities at different uh, players in the market as well who are offering different mbas So, what was it uh, about upgrade that sort of made you think, okay, you know, I I really want to invest, uh, you know, my time, my money into and my in getting my degree in this particular place. Oh uh, well, one thing I already pointed out was the fee structure of the program. It was uh, much cheaper as well as it was flexible because they produce they provided uh, interest free EMI loans as well. So that was one uh, another added point which I wanted to mention. Uh, then uh, re- regarding upgrad um, i had attended a foundation program for 2 uh, to 3 weeks which made me familiar uh, with the tech platform and everything of upgrad and it was uh, pretty user friendly and in the past few months it has improved a lot as well so uh, that made me choose the upgrad program because everything was uh, seamless the user user experience on the upgrad platform where in the recorded lectures and everything is being provided you you are you have to give your internal assessments on the upgrad portal itself so all those things um, were pretty user friendly and uh, that's why i i decided to pursue the program with upgrad mm. and what about you anirudh like in addition to what uh, after basis is anything specific for you as well uh, any elements that you saw that you were like you know this is uh, what I want to do? you know uh, the first thing that came to my mind is how it's going to help me you know have a better career opportunities once i start doing mba because if if i'm investing a certain amount of money i also expect other than getting a, a good learning from it but uh, but better opportunities where i can you know pursue my career or uh, or have a better career opportunities so that's where i felt upgrad has that ability to help you trans have a good transition in terms of your growth monetary or through career wise of someone who has a non technical background or who is getting into the field of business analytics because he wants to learn this field as well uh, i think that's where upgrades uh, mentorship program and upgrades uh, c- uh, career help programs actually helps a lot so that is one of the major reasons i i joined that you know because i know that once i'm done with my uh, complete mba upgrades going to be there to help me have a uh, transition in my uh, career as well hmm. yeah brilliant uh, thanks so much for that anirudh and uh, you know just in terms of the journey now i know anirudh you just started but i'm going to you know go to aftab because aftab is more or less you know completed his uh, mba and uh, for you aftab you know you've obviously looked at the journey now end to end and you've gone through the content you you know experienced the entire learning experience so can you just should have said some light in terms of your your post upgrade sort of experience now now that you finished the program and you're looking towards uh, you know the career outcome so to speak what has been that journey like and you know what what has it been like post pursuing an mba for you 
yes so uh, towards the end of the program in the last uh, term uh, upgrad had offered a mentorship program wherein the learners can interact one on one with a person who is already in the industry who is al already working in the data science related uh, field so uh, that person will help you to build your resume he'll take the mock interviews so that he can uh, understand more about where you want to uh, focus on uh, from interview point of uh, things so that really helped me a lot in actually building up my profile building up my linkedin profile my resume and everything there were three or four rounds of mock interviews conducted uh, from which i got an understanding where i need to improve what are my strengths and weaknesses all those things so uh, after that uh, after once the program has ended now upgrade has provided a careers portal wherein all the jobs uh, related to the particular field with a uh, different number of years of experience and location wise uh, is 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 updated on the portal wherein you can uh, go and apply for the jobs directly so that is also another uh, assistance which upgrade uh, has provided uh, just just a couple of weeks back i got the uh, portal and everything and apart from that i actually went ahead and updated my profile on nokri and i started uh, getting calls i i gave a couple of interviews and uh, uh, luckily for me one of the interviews i, I was able to crack one of the interviews so uh, and and i and i took that offer so uh, it it was uh, uh, the concepts and the skills which i learned in the program which actually helped me to crack the interview because i have never worked on um, machine learning or python or um, related stuffs before it was uh, purely the learnings that i uh, got from the program which helped me uh, crack that particular uh, interview and uh, fortunately for me I, i i got placed in that particular company and i'll be joining in in around 10 days from now on february 8th so that that's uh, an overall overview of the outcome of uh, the mba program which i pursued brilliant that's that's really great to hear uh of that so in just in, in uh, like in terms of content etc this is like have you applied to many other companies as well i think you know many of our previous learners as well they applied to many companies before cracking their first one like you know what, what was the interview preparation like for you uh, from a grad standpoint uh it it depends on what sort of role you are looking out for if it is a, a managerial role or a functional role you need not go deep into the technical stuff uh, you know uh, if it is a um, technical role if it is a data engineer role on the other hand then you need to focus more on the technical side of things so it depends on the particular kind of position that you are looking out for and also the number of ex- the number of years of experience uh, matters because uh, if you have 6 7 8 years of experience then you can easily end up into a, a technical manager sort of role so if you are less than 5 years then obviously you will most probably prefer going into a data engineer role so based on that you can uh, decide the way uh, you want to uh, plan your preparation for the interviews and that that's exactly uh, the mentorship program is uh, going to help you because the the it is a mentor who will be interacting with you will uh, first of all understand what's your objective what's your motive and based on that he will actually plan the three or four one to one interactions with you and he'll provide you all the details what you need to read what you need to refer before your interviews and the mock interviews will also help you out on the interview preparations brilliant that's that's very helpful i think uh, to you thanks afta for that yeah. and like you know you've just sort of touched after we get on just on the career i think what we, we would term as career services so to speak so those elements uh, the mock interview when did you like you know why, how vital was that and how early did this expert come into your learning experience and you know how important was that in the build up to you completing your mba and you know in terms of just unpacking this part of the learning experience apart from the content you have an expert who would be four five steps ahead of you now he's coming and sort of directing you in terms of where you could be uh you know your exit role how vital was this element in terms of your career transition yes, so um, as i already mentioned uh, i i never you i never worked in um, any related technologies or in this data science field before so having um, interaction interactive sessions with people who are already working in the industry that that will definitely um, help you a lot uh, the person 
with whom I was paired with uh, was a data scientist with uh, Verizon Hyderabad for around four years now. And previously, also he used to work as a, a data scientist with Novartis and companies like uh, Deloitte. And um, he had a pretty good understanding of uh, the analytics field. He had a broad and diverse experience in the analytics field and uh, his experience in managing and uh, uh, delivering analytic solutions in different fields like banking, telecom, etc. Uh, actually helped me a lot because he, he shared his experiences like how he used to prepare for the interviews and, and what are the daily uh, tasks a routine task in his work life like so all those things will uh, definitely help you in getting an understanding of what you would be doing once you end up in this field and uh, uh, the mock interviews conducted will uh, will be giving you an understanding of uh, where you stand uh, at that point and it's and with each round of interviews you will definitely get improved because uh, you would be given a strict action plan that you need to follow uh, before the next call so that was a pure um, guidance that I obtained from uh, the industry mentor, which helped me a lot. Brilliant. Thanks so much for that, Aptab. I'm going to circle back to Anirudh also. Anirudh, obviously, now you, you just, how many months is it since you've begun your program? So it's, I'm in my uh, fourth semester. So post this, it's going to be only capstone project. So it's almost, almost on the verge of completing the course. Okay, brilliant. And, you know, for you, your experience so far, uh, you know, obviously you've talked a bit about it, but can you just sort of maybe unpack some of the uh, the features you've enjoyed? And, you know, obviously right now you're, you're working as an analytics manager in your current firm, right? So um, if you hadn't done this program, it, would anything have been different or with learning this program in your current role is something different happening in your, in your job? So uh, what I, what I can uh, confidently say is that I'm, and being very honest about it, that before joining this uh, this course, right, I was I had a I had a very uh, narrow thinking in terms of the data that I, I get and the results that I used to give. So it's, it was more on a okay, this is the data that I have, and I know that I need to get into the I need to get give a solution onto this. So I just I used to do that after after getting enrolled myself into this MBA course where I get to know about more about the. Uh, how the economic factors are affecting the country or an organization or, or, or a firm or what, are, what, what kind of marketing needs to be done and what kind of uh, target audience needs to be reached out. I got, I got a more broader perspective in terms of that where I can think out of the box and I can actually apply those learnings in the, in the work stream that I do. Since mm -hmm. I am more into the marketing side, right? Studying about the marketing theoretically and what are the concepts behind it and why a decision that is being made at a higher level in my organization and what are the reasons behind it became more clear to me in terms of giving the right solution. This actually helped me give few of my more insights that were not, I was not able to look at into because I was only focused at data, right? Uh, through through MBA, I was I was I became more of a story driven person, where you know I understand what happened previously, why it has happened, what I need to do, why I need to do it, and what are the and what is the best way to do it. Hmm. So this is something that I learned in my journey in this in this course. Also, the the way the curriculum is designed, right? Uh, it is not only that you 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 study a course, you give an exam, you done you you're over with. The best thing I liked about this course was a lot of practical implementation in terms of a lot of simulation that was provided. So that was the very first time I saw a Harvard business study that was there where you have to actually apply whatever you have learned previously, have a life uh, or a campaign or a, or, or, a, or, or a supply chain management uh, business case study that is there where you have to apply it submit it within two weeks of time where you are actually trying to understand why something has happened instead of just give, because I, I remember during the college time where we just we used to cram stuff and just yeah. vomit out in the exams right there was no there was not enough learning or you know practical application of things that we used to do this course had helped me understand whatever I'm learning and apply it at the same time at the same moment which has been the best thing so far Brilliant. 
I think it was a very important point. I think practicality and theory. A lot of I can see a lot of questions coming in, and I can already see you're you're answering them, which is great. But also a question on you know the 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 theory aspect. Is a is the program very heavily theory centric? And I think you've sort of probably covered that. Uh, you know there is a good mix of practicality and uh, you know con, uh, applying what you're learning uh, on the job. And just in terms of you know for for yourself, Anirudh, you know uh, in like I mentioned in in your current career, you are applying. uh you know what you're learning right now have you felt you know pursuing this particular mba has helped you uh within your current job with your superiors in conversations when you're telling your bosses or your the company like you know hey i'm pursuing this particular mba how was that and as an outcome you know um, made you within your company at the moment so uh when i started this mba right i did inform my superiors that okay i the reason i'm doing it because i want to get to the business side of the organization where i see myself doing because i know that now i have enough uh, experience in terms of technology in terms of coding but i do not see myself doing the, the same thing uh, my whole life right so yeah. once i started learning about the course when once i got into the course 6 uh, months down the line i had a conversation with my seniors where i told them what my interest is what i want to do where i want to be and why i want to do it right uh fortunately i have been moved from my current role as a analytics manager where i am only looking at the data to a to a role where i am now also into the client facing role as well where i'm also interacting with the client and understanding what their requirement is and pitch a better solution and the reason and the reason i'm able to do it now is because of my understanding of the business as well at the same time this course has actually helped me achieve that Brilliant. And uh, you know, even going forward, do you see uh, it opening up more doors within your organization in terms? Right now, you're looking at business, uh, and is that something you've like got a hard confirmation from in terms of you moving within that role? Yeah, yeah, I did, I did. So I've I've actually moved on to that role. I'm just in a transition phase where I'm just handing over my uh, KRAs to the to to uh, to the uh, new person over here, and then I'll be completely moving on to the new role. But to be sure to be very much to be after in my mc i i the kind of work experience that i have i have switched domains right i have stick to one kind of a tool but i have switched domain but after going through this course and after having conversation with the mentors that upgrad provides right it it became very clear for me that if i need to succeed in a particular uh, uh, organization or a domain or something like that i have to give it time at least 3 to 4 5 years where you can become a subject matter expert and even if you want to switch from one organization to another whatever you have learned in in sense of business will remain with you and you can carry it forward so this is something that my 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 objective is to keep on growing and i also believe that you know you need to keep learning and you need to keep adding that 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 uh, that technology that you know that uh, that knowledge into your cv to keep you that help you push to the next level brilliant thanks thanks for allowing me to i'm going to uh, come to after up i a lot of good questions please do keep adding your questions in the q and a uh, i think anirudh is already answering some of them live even after will be answering uh, on the q and a so i see a question here after which i think you will be able to answer from rahul gupta and so he says uh, you know like he mentioned that you you mentioned that you joined the first batch right of mba and many of these attendees as well here are you know sort of on the fence not very sure uh, should i you know do the mba or not in terms of roi and also because it's online so there are many various reservations one deals with before they you know invest their time money and uh, in doing an mba uh, so how do they sort of get rid of the reservations what are the reservations maybe you faced and how did you overcome those if i can ask you after um when i was part of the very first batch i also as i already mentioned so obviously um, i was not able to get any reviews or feedbacks from previous learners uh, but for you it is pretty easy now we have uh, around 5 to 6 batches already pursuing the program or already completed the program so you can easily get in touch with people who have experience with the program and get rid of all your uh, doubts even i i used to do one on one sessions with the prospective learners clarifying um, all their doubts and uh, these thoughts they have regarding the program so 
for me it was not easy i agree but uh, it was sort of a risk that i actually took up because there is a first always for everything right so i am fortunate uh, or unfortunate I, i don't know but to be part of the very first batch was a pretty interesting experience for me i just uh, took up that risk and fortunately for me it went it went very well but for uh, you guys who are actually looking to join the program now you guys have a lot of uh, reviews and feedbacks available from 5 to 6 batches there are uh, reviews on uh, on on even on social media like aura we have uh, learners writing about the program very good things uh, related to the program so it's it's very easy for you as of now uh, to clarify your uh, doubts and thoughts about the program brilliant uh thanks for that aftab uh, you know one of the things of answer maybe you can unpack that a bit more because i'm sure many others also have a similar question you know i don't have any technical background i don't know uh, you know whether i can actually do this so uh, what about them you know may, they maybe they don't have any experience in analytics or worried about you know programming or coding stuff like that so obviously you've now gone through the content uh, maybe aftab you also can add on this after anil uh, what is the program relevant for them anil in your opinion uh i'll i'll be very honest this program is not coding heavy this this program gives you a a, a glimpse of what is out there in terms of the knowledge that you can get in terms of coding that you can learn right someone within my peers i have people who have done uh, commerce who have done uh, chartered accountancy who have who are into manufacturing as well right they are part of this course and to be honest they have not at all struggled in terms of understanding the 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 coding beat python beat sql beat w because the way the 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 subjects are divided it gives you a very detailed information but not too much of an information for someone to grasp in a such a short time because the course again is a 18 months course where you need to learn most of the subjects that a usual mba person does in two years program where it's four weeks of one particular subject and then four and the multiple classes be it, be it off and online this course tells you this is what is available and this is what you need to do but the reason that you're doing this course is because you want to be the managers in this particular field but not a coder in this particular field if you want to be a coder you need to you need to be doing big being doing a data science course or maybe a uh mtech in data science or mtech in python or something like on machine learning or deep learning here you are here you are here because you want to be managers in the business side you want to be more on to the strategy side rather than the coding side so this anyone who has never had a coding experience can also learn and can also implement the same at their own workspace as well brilliant thanks so much uh, for that Uh, you know, even at the start, um, maybe I'll circle to you after, and I know that you can add on to this. At the start, we saw that right, a bulk of our attendees today also are within the zero to two years experience. You know, just coming out fresh out of college, now wanting to do an MBA, uh, while maybe at their first job also. And now, you know, number one, can you you know work whilst doing this MBA? Obviously, you have done it, but you know, can you shed some light on that for those? And number two, also, can you just shed some light for how how will it be helpful for somebody who just you know out, finish their grad? but uh, wanting to you know do this mba but not very sure maybe after you can take a dig at this and then i do you can oh well the program is um, not at all hectic okay the program uh, requires you to spend around 7 uh, to 8 hours of self learning as well as live sessions would be happening over weekends uh, which would be around 4 to 5 hours in a week so uh, adding both you have to spend around 11 12 hours in a week that is pretty much enough and it is in a self paced manner it's not like you have to spend a specific number of hours every day if you are busy with your work or your personal commitments during weekdays it is pretty fine if you can uh, spend uh, enough time during the weekends so in a way the program is uh, flexible you can uh, manage your work and your personal life uh, based on uh, your uh, situation and circumstances it's just that you have to spend around 10 to 12 hours in a week uh, whatever day week, weekdays weekends that doesn't matter you can uh, make your uh, study plans in such a way that your uh, work life is not affected i know sometimes people would be working like 11 to 12 hours and in these days of work from home we we don't even enough we don't even have a fixed timing for our work right so 
we might have to spend lots of time at work during weekdays but if you can uh, utilize your weekends and provide uh, five six hours in a day on a saturday and uh, another five six hours on a sunday then that would also be um, enough for you to uh, cope up with the program the pace of the program and uh, learn enough from the program and give your assessments and exams so in that way the program is not at all hectic you can uh, manage your uh, work life as well as your personal life along with uh, doing the program and and what was your second question chef and i just forgot just for those who are starting out their their career zero to two years experience like graduates right now wanting to do an mba but you know not sure whether i should do full time online uh I meaning sorry do it part time online like doing the nmims one whilst working so is it relevant for them as well and how can it be helpful yes uh, definitely so uh, you have lesser number of years of experience than two years experience then definitely if you are looking out for a career transition to a, a data science or a data engineer related field you can pursue this program because this will give you enough understanding of uh, the related concepts in this particular field and you can actually end up into a data engineer related role but if you are looking out for a, a technical um, sort of role then uh, you might have to spend some extra related to your studies apart from the curriculum that is provided by uh and anonymous you might have to read more you might have to um, spend more time surfing on the internet uh, reading more stuff otherwise if you are uh, having more number of years of experience then uh, what you are learning from the program as sanju had already mentioned that is enough because from a technical manager point of view you need not have a very deep understanding of technical stuff you just you just uh, maybe you have to do a course review of your uh, team team members so you need to be able to understand what they have written and if you if you have that sort of that level of knowledge that would be enough uh, for you brilliant so i think that that's very helpful after um, and it will actually instead of uh, you know pick up one more question which i see which has come on the q and a uh and i'm actually going to allow this particular uh learner there is attendee to uh, ask a question so rahul i can see you asked a question which i think is very relevant about the mba on and so i'm just going to ask you to unmute and uh, you can ref, uh, you know just uh, say your question out loud can you hear us rahul yeah hi hi guys hi now hi stefan hi aftab and hi anirudh uh, so thank you for taking out time to talk to us so i am actually a part of a global mba here with upgrad so i am the first batch of the global mba so my uh, uh, my uh, like lot of people when i talk to about online mba they have a little of reservations and very skeptical how will the industry take it and all that stuff but how will you guys manage when you go for an interview so the interviewer asks like this is online it's not of that value how will you guys manage to do all that brilliant thank you for your question i think you can oh. answer uh um, you know let's let's look at the current situation that globally this covid 19 has impacted right where due to a lot of social distancing and due to because of lot of uh the way we were going in terms of education in terms of work space has changed completely and maybe for a very long time you know where where people are very much apprehensive in terms of you know going in a group of more than 50 60 people especially in metropolitan cities because when you look at uh, when you look at you know uh, doing an mba from an offline channel you have to have at least 2 years of uh, hostel life or a college life where you interact with a lot of people right but looking at the way things have turned out where everybody has been stuck at their home for almost a year i to be very honest I, when i applied for this mba i never thought that i'll be finishing my mba completely while sitting at home where where i will not do a single day of traveling during my uh, during my mba right uh, when and also if you have enough enough experience in your kitty to justify that the reason that you want to do mba is because you want to move up the ladder right is also very helpful because again it depends upon people to people and person to person what exactly they're looking for someone who's looking to have another exposure in terms of college life and, and he he knows that he will be able to uh, do the mba through an offline channel that's very good but there are a lot of people who are earning and who 
do not want to risk or do not want to invest that much time or money in in getting that the same degree because to be very honest you learn the same you learning the only difference is that you are doing an online channel or an offline channel but the learning that you get and the experience that you get is still the same brilliant thanks so much uh, for that anirudh and uh, you know as another question i think uh, anirudh maybe you can answer because i remember you touched up based on this based on your uh, your cohort uh, you know somebody who is uh, come from a manufacturing background so uh, pratik as I'm, i'm from a manufacturing background i'm actually trying to yeah manufacturing industry with nine and a half years of experience and i have no experience in in software essentially so how will this program sort of benefit me for in my manufacturing industry uh pratik as you know a lot of a lot of uh, industries including the manufacturing industries are turning to a lot of automation a lot of uh, deep learning a lot of uh, neural networks a lot of machine learning right and the reason behind that is because every decision an organization wants to make they want it to be data driven they do not want to work on the basis of intuition what 20 years ago used to happen where people are manufacturing any kind of goods based on the kind of money that they have or or the kind of production power that they have what they want to look at is the past history they want to look at is what what are they capable of what have been they been serving in that industry they want to make decision based on that in today's world everything revolves around uh, everything revolves around data right so in case even if you want to switch from a manufacturing industry or even if you want to stay in the manufacturing industry uh, stefan there's a lot of noise from your end right. yeah so in even in case you want to switch the industry or even in the case you want to be in the same industry and want to grow having an, an mba with the business analytics helps you make decision for your organization and for yourself in a more in, in a much better way and that is the reason having an M, having no experience in software doesn't make a difference because you are what you this program is giving you a glimpse of what is out there once you start working on this on these codes on on these tools nobody is perfect i am still learning i have not if i would have to rate myself in coding i would still give myself 7 because there's so much that i have not done and that is out there in google or in the internet that you cannot grasp completely so it's an evolving time it's an evolving uh, world and it is an evolving way to learn brilliant thanks so much anirudh uh, coming back to you after a lot so many questions i think are coming and we're trying to take as many as possible uh, you know online versus off, uh, versus offline uh after you know a few learners are asking about that like you know uh why should i do an offline book i can spend 20 months doing an offline or should can i also i can also do the same thing online in 20 months so how did you decide you know going for the online and why and you know what are your thoughts on on both of those well it was my uh, circumstances right because if you are opting for an offline program you have to leave your job and uh, give your full uh, investments with regard regarding to your times you have to spend more time you have to spend all the time uh, with studies going to the campus as an offline program but i i didn't have that particular option uh, so that's why i had to opt for an online mba now uh, if you compare between the two uh, even the faculties who are there for the online mba program are the same you you most of the major, majority of the professors the faculties are from uh, nmims offline uh campus program only so the level of teaching that you are being provided in the online program is pretty much the same so in from that point of view it doesn't make much of a difference whether you pursue the online program or the offline and 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 as anirudh already mentioned in these times even their offline programs are being conducted online so um the mode of uh, teaching even for the offline programs across the campuses in india they are being online in the last one year or so so from that point of view uh, pursuing an online program uh, is not uh, much of a problem all the concepts and everything uh, are being clarified clearly you can interact directly with the professor in in the live sessions and some of the professors are even um, so cooperative that they provide their whatsapp numbers or their linkedin profile so that you can get connected one to one with them and uh, 
talk to them and clarify all your doubts and everything uh, related to the particular course so in that way um, pursuing an online program shouldn't be a problem in these times where technology has advanced a lot and everything is happening virtually um, through internet brilliant thanks so much for that uh, and you know maybe a few questions asking like you know what is actually covered in the in the course content and i know that you know the brochure is available syllabus is available but can you maybe uh, anirudh uh, you know just sort of quick just paint a bigger picture of the content that you went through and you know the different elements the different semesters what was included and uh, can you shed some light also on the exams how was how are those conducted right now and how do you sort of give them yeah so uh, mine was a I, i guess aftabs as well is a 15th month course right i guess now the course has been extended to 18 months which is a very good thing right It, when you look at in terms of the kind of learning and the kind of uh, you know uh, pressure that you can have i think it's a very good thing that uh, upgrad decided that this this course should be spread across 18 months rather than 15 uh, given a chance if i had to opt between the 15 months and 18 months course i would have opted for 18 months course uh, the reason behind that is simple because whatever i i i'm learning i want to make sure that it stays with me rather than just goes away and and the best part about this course is in in a usual mba program right there's a semester and you're learning all the subjects together simultaneously if there is a class if there's a class in the morning at 9 to 10 for uh, organizational behavior you might have a next class for finance in upgrades uh, nmims mba for two weeks straight you only focus on one particular subject which is the best thing that you can have where your only focus would be learning economics or learning sql or learning python and there will be nothing to distract you this way you can learn more you can focus more and you can implement more in your learning as well and again the course includes both uh, internal assessments uh, term and exams as well as uh, projects and uh, simulations which is again a very good uh, good thing i preferred more of simulations and projects rather than internal assessment because it gives you an opportunity to whatever you're learning and implement then and there and and maybe you know uh, try out few things within those project right so that is the best thing that i found about this course in terms of curriculum again the 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 way the live sessions happen it happens on the weekends it rarely happens over a weekday you the, the if you have any issues you can you can request your mentors or or your student mentor that is available to have extra sessions as well like for example in my cohort there was a there was a lot of uh, people who was requesting for extra sessions in statistics and there were three to four extra sessions that happened on the weekdays which was very helpful so this is this is what upgrad helps you that, and it is that is the most uh, beneficial point of doing this mba brilliant brilliant i think it has been on a on a interesting point in terms of you know your student mentor for example and i think you you probably not touched upon that for both of you maybe aftab uh, also like you know you have a student mentor uh, as well and how did that sort of help you in your journey and what element of this was i uh, mean of having a student mentor uh, was helpful for you when you in pursuing your mba so student mentor is your single point of contact for everything related to the program so right before the program uh, started uh, uh, my student mentor uh, his name was ashish rao so he contacted me one on one and uh, uh, just about how uh, what is the objective that uh, i am looking forward to from the program my professional background my educational experience everything he got an understanding of everything related to me before the program started and and he was there to help uh, uh, each and every problem that i faced related to the program uh, he was a single point of contact even if uh, we want to contact the professors for some clarifications regarding some questions in the exam or something like that we can uh, just shoot an email uh, to the student mentor he'll be coordinating everything uh, with the professor or if you want to get some clarifications from the university you can do that as well through your student mentor so basically um, he is there out 
uh, he is there to help you out uh, in each and every situation even after the program has ended now related to your certificates or anything related to your placement assistance for each and everything uh, you can uh, directly uh, contact him over whatsapp or on our call uh, in person and uh, he would be there to help you out so that was a very great experience for me uh, having a student mentor who is reachable at any point of time during weekdays weekends and everything even while uh, giving the exams during the weekends if you find some difficulty with the metal platform some technical difficulties you can uh, at that point of time you can just give a call and he'll coordinate with the um, particular uh, service provider who is metal for us he will, con he will directly coordinate with the metal uh, team and just um, sort out uh, whatever the issue is brilliant thanks so much for that after just giving some light on that uh, you know just we're coming to the end we're almost five minutes left to, you know for this we don't want to, you know take too much of time last couple of you know few questions we'll ask to both of you maybe after just in terms of outcome right we touched upon this maybe around uh, just in the middle of the session uh, in terms of outcome it was very helpful for you in terms of you know finding this particular opportunity that you currently have found and you know how uh, Obviously, Upcut is going to help you. You talked about the career services, the mentors, the career portal, the jobs, etc. that you do receive. But, you know, how important is it that, that the individual, or such as yourself, you also, you know, take that initiative and you start applying? Is that something you did by yourself? And, you know, how did you sort of, you know, go about doing that? Yes, that was something which I did by myself so even before the placement assistance and the career services from Upgrad actually started. So I, I went ahead uh, and applied uh, on opportunities on Nokri and other job profiles uh, wherein I got, uh, I started getting calls. So even if you don't do that, you can uh, wait for the program to be over and uh, receive your MBA degree in your hand and um, apply on the careers portal that is provided by Upgrad as well. And, and you will be uh, interacting with your peers. That's the most important thing. You would be in a batch of around 100, 120 students who would be there to help you out uh, in, in each and every situation. So uh, we have uh, our own WhatsApp group, subgroups. I mean, um, the batches of around 100, 120 students, you would be having your own set of uh, peer learners around, with around maybe 10 to 15 people. And you would be having... Uh, a WhatsApp group separately for you and you would be helping out each other. So uh, related to um, in regards to searching out for opportunities and all, uh, you would be get, getting a lot of help from your peer learners. That is, that is I think, uh, more important than the career services provided by Upgrad, uh, to be honest. So your peer learners uh, uh, and, and, and everyone you would be interacting with in the program would be of uh, very help for you. And that's, that's one thing which uh, uh, I wanted to highlight. Uh, what I would also like to add to this, right, is that, you know, if what I have also experienced uh, post, once you get off your college where you have an opportunity of having a college fair of job, job fair and everything, post that after you have two to three years of experience or four years of experience, if until, unless there's a, there's a network that you have which can help you get into different companies, you rarely get to have an opportunity in terms of getting hired by the big fours like American Express or KPMG or McKinsey, where a lot of hiring happens due to the referrals, whatever referrals that the, someone who is in the organization is already there. Because as of now, there are a lot of people who are applying for the same position and the, and the only one who can push your resume is one Again, if you have a very good resume, no one can stop you, obviously. But the reason that if that hundreds and thousands of resume and how would you have a chance to be, uh, you know, above the rest of them is basically someone who is vouching for you in terms of that role, in terms of getting hired. And that is what having a good network is very important. And that is the most important thing that I also agree that after mentioned is that a great uh, networking is something that will help you grow your career in a very fast way, fastest. Brilliant. Thanks so much for that, Anirudh. Uh, you know, just in terms of the process, uh, it might be a bit more uh, older in Asama's mind. Uh, you know, how do you apply maybe uh, for, the, for the NMIMS program, uh, you know, and how do you sort of start? There's an eligibility test or is anything, any sort of screening that it goes through? Uh, maybe Anirudh, you want to cover that on the Yeah, so I guess there's an inter there's a uh, entrance examination that happens you know, on a very initial stage when you apply. 
it's more of a uh, you know aptitude test that happens uh, and i believe i'm not that much of a highly topper kind of a student in my graduation or in my schooling and if someone like me can clear that i guess there are people who are much smarter than me then they can also clear as well brilliant and you know finally i think very uh, apt question probably to end with uh, you know for uh, you guys before we move back to navda is you know how valued is business analytics is it really something that the current corporate market is looking at and wants uh, after maybe you can take a dig for 30 seconds to 40 and then i'll get with you also again after you can go first can you hear us i think you're on mute yeah i'm sorry so uh, analytics is uh, one of the booming fields as of now right because uh, every organization progresses based on decision making and if the decision making is based on data that is the best thing you can have your intuition and your gut feelings and everything can go wrong but data cannot go wrong so um, analytics uh, that's why analytics is very important because uh, most of the organizations are now being uh, wanting to turn into data driven decision making you need to have people who have enough skills in uh, data analysis and uh, that would help you to i mean um, it's not about just gathering data you need people who can analyze data and bring patterns and insights and recommendations out of that data so that's why whatever be the industry be it finance be it marketing be it uh, hr uh, manufacturing or uh, anything uh, you should have people who can actually go through the data read through the data and find out uh, insights and recommendations based on that so whatever be the industry data driven decision making is going to be important and that's why uh, analytics and uh, more importantly this particular uh, mba program which you which you pursue which you which you can pursue uh, related to the data analytics is uh, important brilliant well, thanks so much aftab and finally over to you uh, uh, anirudh Uh, in terms of that. I can say that the demand for the uh, data analytics and data analysis is going is skyrocketing. You know, I've been reading about it a lot by a lot of surveys that has been happening by PwCs and KPMG and a lot of different firms, right? And they also believe by twenty twenty two, twenty twenty four, eighty five percent of the organization would have adopted it, one or the other form of analytics in their organization. uh be it be it in terms of uh, the banking sector where they are trying to detect fraud or be it in term of logistics where they are trying to adapt the best possible way to reduce the manpower and increase the eff- efficiency or be it in terms of digital marketing where everything is now on ott platforms or mobile phones or apps and everything this field is going to grow and this fi- like i said data is a new oil and as long as there are people who are using the technology the data is going to keep on pouring and pouring and uh, the opportunities are going to be endless brilliant thank you so much for that anirudh and thank you so much aftab for you know giving us your time and spending this hour with us i think very insightful very helpful for you know all the attendees who have joined in uh, you know for for those of you who'd like to connect with both anirudh and aftab i have posted their links uh, in the chat i'll repost them again uh you know please do feel free to reach out to them as well uh, in terms of understanding more about their experience thanks so much aftab and anirudh and before we close i'm going to just uh, hand over to navda who will uh, you know just give a closing note and take it forward sure. uh thanks stefan and uh, first of all thanks anirudh thanks aftab for taking out the time and thanks everyone for joining in i think uh, it was a really useful session for our learners as well uh, you know who could get an insight about the program Uh, there were many apprehensions about the programming online and what's the relevance of business analytics so both of you have beautifully covered it uh, just in terms of my closing note i think uh, you know business analytics and data analytics is here to stay and to become a data driven manager is the need of the hour so a very relevant course uh, uh, you know for future proofing your career i would say uh, having said that yes uh, i see a couple of questions around other specializations as well Uh, uh we do have a couple of other specializations from other universities on upgrad so i would request you to check out the website and uh, you know choose the specialization or the program that's most uh, relevant to you and uh, good luck and we hope to see most of you on the other side of the table with us as students so thank you so much great thanks everyone for joining in and uh, look forward to you know seeing 
you in the future as well. Uh, please do drop us a note on admissions at upgrad.com if there was any questions that weren't answered. Uh, you know, I put that again in the chat window. Uh, we are sorry we couldn't pick up every single question. We tried to cover it as much as possible. So admissions at upgrad and you can check out upgrad.com for any other details you require about the other programs. Thanks, Anirudh. Thanks, Aftab. Thanks, Navda. And thank you, everyone, for joining in with us tonight. Uh, have a good evening and see you soon. Wish you the same. Thank you, Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye, everyone.